are in the President Gutabaya Rajapaksa's bedroom inside the official residence and what's striking is not only the size of it but the grandeur really compared with how ordinary Sri Lankans are living. Just to give you a tour of not only his bedroom but his uh, in, entire sort of wing, we have a huge television set here, uh, quite a few Sri Lankans are in the room but they're making sure, so they say, that they look after it and they protect it. So this part of the residence has been sealed off to normal protesters and people who've come to take a look because they say they want to look after it because eventually this will be the seat for the president and his official residence again. Even the bathroom is just ginormous. This is the swimming pool uh, that he used behind us. Another very popular site is the gymnasium and you can see people really crowding into there, it's packed. It's turned from Saturday, a day when tens of thousands of people took to the streets in utter frustration, humiliation of what they've been putting up with for months on end to almost a sort of festival or carnival atmosphere here. You can see that lots of people have brought their children with them and that's because the schools have been closed for the last couple of weeks because there isn't enough electricity for people to even go to school. Sri Lanka's economic problems are far from resolved even with the change of government and a change at the top of the political system. It has burned through all its foreign currency. It doesn't have enough money for food, fuel or medicine. Public servants have been told to take Friday off to go home and grow food. They've also been told that for five years they can go abroad and take another job, send that money back to Sri Lanka and then eventually they'll still have their job here. That's just how desperate this country is. It's begging for money from the International Monetary Fund from Japan, Russia, China, Qatar. But so far, it just doesn't have enough to be able to satisfy people here. The frustration is continuing to build, even though it seems pretty calm today, but we don't know how long that will really continue for. But for now, though, people are enjoying this rare opportunity to go into one of the seats of power effectively and to see how the other half live. And when you speak to people, they say, how could the leaders of this country possibly know what it is that we're going through when they're living like this and we can barely afford to have two meals a day?